Hi guys, this is Erica Weston with Fox Sports Midwest, and you're listening to my favorite St. Louis Blues hockey podcast, Let's Go Blues Radio. Hi there, everyone. I'm Haley Wickenheiser, and this is Let's Go Blues Radio, past to the future. And we are back with the past portion of Let's Go Blues Radio, Past the Future. Today I am joined by a uh, a man who coached the Missouri River Otters and the St. Louis Bandits. His son, Logan, plays for the Ottawa Senators. And if I'm, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong here, I believe, Jeff Brown, you played in the NHL as well. Is that correct? couple games, had a cup of coffee up there. Yeah. <laughs> so in the NHL, you played uh, for Quebec. St. Louis, Vancouver, the Hartford, Carolina organization, Toronto, and Washington. Uh, Jeff, thank you very much for joining the show, and um, I I really uh, hope you and your family have been safe and well during this quarantine. It would have been short for you to name the teams I didn't play for, but yeah, uh, yeah no, we'd be great. Um, we, uh, we've all been hunkered down here in Chesterfield, and uh, it's been actually kind of cool, uh, you know, having back in the the house and uh you know at older ages now as opposed to you know when they were younger so it's uh it's been fun it's it's been great having be back together yeah i bet um yeah having logan back in the house and as well as the um you know the wife and the family it's probably like the old days back when you were in your playing days yeah well uh unfortunately my kids other than my daughter really never got to see me play so uh logan was born in 98 and that's the year i was uh I retired. Uh, Caden was in 03 and then Jenna was in 94. So she doesn't really remember either. So, um, yeah, but, uh, but for sure, uh, when uh, all these hockey guys back in the house together, it's fun. Yeah. Oh yeah. I bet. Um, well, I do remember your playing days and, uh, and I will say that, uh, you know, as as an 85 kid, I, uh, I kind of tried to model myself after your play as a defenseman. So uh, having you on the show is quite the delight for me. I've, I've told many stories on the show about watching you as a young man. So, um, you know, I guess maybe Logan can't uh, can't speak for that because he never saw you actually play. But I can. And um, I don't know, I guess I never made the NHL. So I hope that's uh, not not a slight at you. <laughs> no, not at all. Um, so Jeff, I wanted to talk to you, uh, mostly, well, we're going to talk mostly about your NHL career and I want to get started here about you getting, uh, drafted by the Quebec Nordiques second round 36th overall in 1984. Um, you did not make Quebec right away as, as most people know with defensemen, especially you don't jump right into the NHL typically, especially as a second round pick. Um, you kind of fluctuated a little bit back and forth between, uh, Quebec and a couple and, uh, the, the AHL team there. Um, so I wanted to ask you mostly, uh, when you first started in your career, uh, did you ever feel like you would be able to join the NHL? And uh, did you have doubts about your ability? Because, um, again, you know, you're a guy that uh, that wasn't able to jump right into the league. No, I mean, that's that's part of the uh, uh, it's half the battle is confidence and, and understanding your game and understanding what you need to get get to where you want to be. Um, I, I played some games as a 19-year-old. Uh, I was fortunate enough to uh, get called up from my junior team in Sudbury. Um, and so really, other than 20 games my first year, I was up uh, my, my entire career. Early, young, and knew what I needed to change. The, uh, the option was there. I was very fortunate in Quebec. They had some incredible offensive forwards. Um, but they didn't have a, a guy to run the power play. And so that's kind of what I did my entire career. So I was very fortunate to be able to play with the likes of Michel Goulet and Peter Stastny, Joe Sackett, guys like that, uh, who were all forwards. Um, a lot of the time I, Joey Sackett played, uh, as my partner on the power play. So, um, you know, 
I was very blessed uh, throughout my career to be able to play with uh, power play guys that were as good as there was in in those eras. Yeah, and um, so obviously, again, in Quebec, playing with uh, a lot of the superstar players you just listed. Uh, but then uh, December 13th, 1989 was a big day for you, and I say that because that was the day you were traded to the St. Louis Blues uh, for Tony Herkus and Greg Millen. Before coming to St. Louis as a Blue, uh, what were your thoughts about St. Louis? Did you know anything about it, and had you played there before? No, I, I had uh, really... I, I didn't know anything about St. Louis, really. Uh, truthfully, growing up in Ottawa, uh, Ontario, you know, Middle America, you know, much the same, much the same as uh, people on the East Coast, West Coast. Uh, Middle America is a long way, and uh, didn't know anything about it. But uh, funny, funny story about that trade. Um, they uh, at the time I was, I had stayed home. The team was in Buffalo, I think, and. Uh, <laughs> Coach and I had a little Michelle Bergeron and I had a little bit of a, a spat and so he was kind of uh, leaving me at home uh, for the road trip and so I was out by myself well a couple of injured guys and we were shooting pucks at the Coliseum and St. Louis got there the day before and uh, they got to the rink and, and Greg Millen was standing beside Brian Sutter and said uh Wow, Sudzy, we could you sure use that guy on our power play because I was taking shots from the blue line, I guess. And uh, I can't remember, two weeks later, uh, they were in New York City, and uh, Millsy gets off the bus and Brian says, I need to talk to you. <laughs> you no. just got traded for that power play guy. <laughs> he was none too happy. But anyways, um, yeah, no, it, it didn't know anything about St. Louis. Uh, it was uh, really... Uh, a great move of all the teams that you mentioned. It was the one place that uh, I was really upset when I got traded um, before to Vancouver. It was, uh, you know, it was home. We made it home and uh, my daughter was born here and really thought I was going to start my career here and uh, was coming off an incredible year. And, and the next thing I know, I'm going to Vancouver. So it was, it was difficult because this really became home. And obviously, uh, you know, we're proof of that. We're, we live here full time now. Yeah, yeah. that's uh, And we're happy to have yeah, you. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, again, you've coached a, a, a lot here in St. Louis since you retired. And, um, you know, one of the proud alumni, I'm sure, because uh, alumni, many alumni call this home. So we're happy to have you. Uh, 1990, 1991, though, um, you, uh, for the Blues, 59 points in 67 games, which is very impressive for a defenseman. Uh, you missed nearly a month with a broken ankle. Uh, Blues finished that year with 105 points. That was a hole and oats team. Uh, lost in the Norris final to Minnesota in six games, which was considered a big upset. Uh, do you think that was a team, and you know, you think back to the Vancouver team that made the Stanley Cup final that you were on. Was that one of the better teams you played for? Was that Blues team with 105 points? Yeah, you know, like it's for years before, you know, we won it all last year, you know, people who were in St. Louis were disappointed, as they should be. But at the same time, you know, with 30 teams, 31 teams, it's really hard to win. There's a lot of really good teams. And, you know, when I look back at all the good teams that I played for, that certainly ranks up there. But again, I mean, we were better than Minnesota. We should never lost to them. That was an upset. But, you know, I... It, it was they got a bounce we didn't and that's that's all it is I mean you look back at the run that the Blues had last year I mean you know th there's luck involved there's being at the right place right time I'm not taking anything away from the guys that win and certainly uh you know teams that that lose I mean they're right there it's so close such a uh frat or whatever it is and so you know that year we certainly I mean they went on to play Pittsburgh in the finals and I'm convinced we would have given Pittsburgh a better run than they did but um it is you know it is what it is we had we had everything that year we really did and uh we just just came up a little short and we really you know that whole early 90s the time I was here really we had a chance to win almost every year I thought that you know in 93 I guess it was we had a really good team. we had good teams every year I mean, we were all, you know, there's a lot of out of those teams in the early 90s. But, uh, 
you know, went on to be Hall of Famers and were all playing in primes and getting into their primes. And it would have been fun to keep that group together for, you know, five more years for sure. Oh, I think so, yeah. And, and again, people look back at that those teams and remember some of the, the great names that were on there. And you look at 92, you made the NHL All-Star game as a rep for the Blues. Uh, and then 92, 93, you put up your best career numbers, career high, 25 goals and 78 points in 71 games. And remember, folks, again, this is a defenseman we're talking about. So that was uh, that set a single-season Blues record for goals and points. Uh, closest to ever come to that was Al McInnes in points with 68 points a couple of years later, and then goals, 20 goals for Al McInnes. Uh, so again, 25 goals, 78 points. What do you attribute so much of your success to, especially that one season offensively? No, Brad Hall for sure. Uh, in my opinion, you know, obviously back in those days, he was the best pure goal scorer in the game. And certainly, I believe that the best period goal scorer of all time, I mean, the stuff that he did through the years, um, he could just one-time everything, uh, no matter what I fired over to him. You know, he one-time stuff under the bar. He was always ready to shoot. Just just a pure goal scorer. And obviously, his, his playmaking ability, you know, because he was such a good scorer, sometimes went unnoticed. But um, the times where they were, and Hully and, and, you know, other guys were wide open and he'd fake shot and slide it over or whatever it was. So I, I attribute a lot of my success uh, singing to him. Uh, um, but we just had an incredible power play and unselfishness. Guys that had their head up and smart. And we had front net, uh, net front presence. We had, you know, brains around the outside of the umbrella and we just moved it around good. But we had a good overall team and um, it was just, that was a real fun team to be a part of. I, uh, you know, that, that obviously was my best year. I missed, I don't know, nine or 10 games with a broken ankle that year too. I really, you know, injuries really slowed me through my career, but if I could have played those extra 10 games, um, it really would have been, obviously it was a memorable year, but, uh, but really a, a special individual year for me. Yeah, no, definitely. And and so again, you had a, a lot of a personal achievements in St. Louis, but unfortunately, as you mentioned earlier, uh, traded in 1994 to Vancouver uh, for the rights to Craig Janney, along with Brett Hedekin and Nathan Lafayette. Um, I mean, again, I, I remember seeing you on the news the night you were traded and uh, just being heartbroken, not wanting to leave. Um, did you ever think that... Uh, you'd return to St. Louis in some capacity or um, was it just, okay, I just got to pick myself up and move on. Well, I mean, a professional, you got to go and that's part of the, the thing that sucks in this sport is uh, you're a number. And, and that's really the way I felt, uh, you know, again, like I said, I was coming off some pretty good years and uh, you know, we just didn't get over the hump in the playoffs and I'm, convinced if we would have, uh, you know, maybe the, the, the teams would have got broke. But uh, it was it what it is. And I was, like you said, it was the only place that I was extremely upset to move from. Um, but I always had a special place for people in St. Louis and you know, the Blues. And, you know, you, you move on and you go to other places. And it always felt like it was home to me. Yeah, no, and, and again, that was a, a sad day for many of us to see you go. But you go on to the '94 team, the uh, lot when you were Vancouver, when you lost to the New York Rangers, um, and then uh, again, you went to the Stanley Cup final in 1998 with Washington. Your final season in the NHL. Um, what was it, it like for you? I mean, was it something that that you kept saying, "I'm going to win a Stanley Cup before I retire," or was it just that you were you were excited? to get that as far as you did those two times? Well, I mean, that's our dream, eh, to hoist the cup. I never got the opportunity to um, as a player, and it uh, was really close in 94. I'm convinced we were the better team. Uh, the Rangers were dynamite during the regular season, but uh, we had worn them down. We beat them easily in games five and six and we went into madison square garden and lost three to two nathan lafayette hit the crossbar with five minutes to go uh again you know we win it's what, 
20 years would have been the Rangers not winning the cup then, you know, sort of thing. And there's no reason why we shouldn't have won. It's just, like I said, it's such a, a bounce here or a call there or whatever it is, a post. Um, but really disappointing because we really felt, and, and ironically, um, you know, a little bit like the Blues, we did it a little later that year because we went into uh, the playoffs as the seventh seed and uh, played Calgary in the first round and we're down three games to one. And my wife was pregnant with Jenna and she's like, when are you going to be back? And I said, well, probably not. Probably soon we're down three to one to a pretty good team. And then we went on and won uh, three games in a row in overtime, games five, six, and seven. Uh, then beat uh, Dallas in five, Toronto in five. And we just, I mean, we just started dominating teams much the same as, as St. Louis did last year, where they just wore teams down. And we did the same with, with the Rangers in the finals. Like games five and six, we were just dominant. And we just couldn't get it done in game seven. It was really disappointing. But uh, anyways, it was uh, to play an entire career and get a couple of chances. 98, you know what? Detroit was very better than Washington. So um, they were the best team. That that one doesn't hurt as much as uh, as the 94 year. Yeah, I can imagine. So again, you re- you retire after the 97, 98 season. Um, go into coaching uh, pretty quick. Well, not pretty quickly, but uh Went on the Missouri River Otters of the UHL. I'm sure many of the listeners of this show remember the River Otters. Uh, played there in the Family Arena in St. Charles. You joined during the 0506 season. Um, the River Otters did not make the playoffs that year. That was a rough year. But um, was that your first experience uh, coaching professional hockey? And and uh, did it make you want to keep going forward and and uh, you know coach professionals? What happened there was uh, Mike Shanahan Jr. was the owner of the team, and uh, I had coached um, several minor hockey teams, the 80 AAA team, and I was starting to coach my son, 98 team, and and, uh, and Mike called me at Christmas to say that he was letting Killer Kaminsky go and that I finished the season um, as the coach. And so that was really the only – I coached for a couple months there at the, at the finish of that season, but the – team was already disbanding afterwards and it was just more of a hold things together for you know that that level is not you know it's professional for sure but it's a long way from the NHL um but it was fun to 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 coach that level to go from coaching minor hockey to to jumping up to to pro it's still pro a lot of guys still have the dream and it was fun um but then went back and just and stuck with the kids for for a while longer until I started coaching junior so, yeah, you move on to the St. Louis Bandits of the uh, NAHL. 2008-2009, you made your debut. Debut. Uh, the Bandits went 42-9-7, and winning the South Division and the Robertson Cup. Um, and you coached there a couple more seasons till the Bandits left in 2013. Uh, what was that experience like, coaching uh, uh, junior players and, and uh, you know, kind of getting to know the game from that level? Yeah, no, I... I what I've done, right? Four years there, two years in India, and then three years up in Ottawa. Junior hockey, it's fun. The kids are young and and full of, you know, piss and vinegar, for lack of a better word. But just guys that still, like, they really want to get to the next level. So they're very attentive, and they're pretty good level of hockey. So I really enjoyed that level. Um, you know, so it was fun. I mean, we won a championship that first year, and, and um, you know, a lot of on Division One hockey, and that's the stuff that you're most proud of as a coach is uh, not only, you know, develops hockey players, but as young men and, and you know, show them the right, right back, uh, both on the ice, off the ice, uh, that kind of stuff. So, uh, again, you mentioned uh, coaching in Indiana in the USHL, Ottawa 67s of the OHL. Um, you had a lot of success. Won the Clark Cup with Indiana in 13-14. Uh, Ottawa 67s missed the playoffs. Then you joined, and in the first season, they made it back to the playoffs, uh, even became head coach and GM in summer of 2015. But uh, just a couple of years later, you uh, ended up resigning, and I wanted to ask you, um, is is coaching still going to be in your future, or uh, do you think that uh, you're, you've, you've hung up your coaching whistle for the time being? The Ottawa, the Ottawa move was, uh, you know, a, a team that was, 
well, horrible. Um, <laughs> not not only horrible on the ice, but horrible uh, uh, as far as draft picks and everything going forward. It was just a – they were in, in rough shape, and it was uh, something where I came – there's the dogs. Um, <laughs> that's, that's okay. It was something where I came in and it was, you know, it was my hometown. Mom and dad were still alive. It was, it was more of a, you know, it wasn't a, it wasn't a great coaching decision, uh, uh, professional decision. It was more of a family decision to be back home with mom and dad and all that kind of stuff. But for, for that team to have success, I had to gut it and bring in a whole bunch of young guys and get a whole bunch of draft picks. And I think you've seen in the last couple of years, all those young guys, the 15, 16 year olds became 19, 20, and now they're having their success. And I just, truthfully, I'm, I'm, I moved to the States. Um, I'm an American now. I'm still a Canadian, but you know, my, my family was anxious to get back to St. Louis and, and we just, it, I just couldn't stick around long enough to, to see it all pan out, I guess is the point. Um, but do, do I want to continue to coach? I would, I would think long and hard where I would go the next time. Like that was more of a heart decision than a brain decision. And uh, if I got an opportunity, it would be uh, strictly a professional decision as opposed to, you know, pulling up my heartstrings. Okay. Yeah. Good. No, like I said, I mean, looking at some of the numbers that you put up as a coach, it's uh, quite impressive. And I remember uh, you taking over the River Otters. It was a very exciting thing for uh, us because uh, I was somebody who went to a lot of the River Otters games. I grew up in St. Charles. So um, yeah, I, when I saw you leave coaching and I was like, man, that that guy's got some some great numbers, some great history as a coach. So, um, but now you're, you're with the uh, the triple a blues what's uh what's that like how is that different for you than um than you're coaching the junior kids no i'm not coaching the triple a blues anymore i coached uh, when we first moved back here a couple years ago i coached my for a couple of years uh, but last year uh, i wasn't a coach at the triple a level i mean i i've been there done that for since 2000 basically when i first moved back i coached the 88s i coached the 89s i coached the 97s the 98s um and then the 03s so i've kind of uh you know <laughs> i've had my fill of minor hockey uh, my kids have kind of moved on um that's not as to say that i don't like to help out once in a while and and get back on the ice and whatever but no, I'm uh, I'm strictly a dad now who uh, really enjoys watching hockey and and especially watching you know Logan professionally and then uh, Caden is at the U.S. Uh, NTDP in in Detroit. Um, he played on the U17 team last year. He'll be at the uh, U18 team um, this upcoming season. So that's exciting for me to have the ability to uh, to watch them play. So you mentioned Logan in the NHL for the uh, Ottawa Senators and then uh, Caden. Your younger son uh, still playing hockey as well and NHL hopeful. Um, when they kind of started making the jump to the next level and kept moving up, and it was obvious that Logan was probably good enough to make the NHL, were you more of the, okay, here's what you got to do to make the NHL as a former NHL player, or were you more like, uh, you sure you want to do this? I mean, what, what was your, uh, your, your mindset like when you saw, see your sons uh, moving up the ranks? Well, I mean, listen, it's it's in our blood, right? Uh, right. It's exciting. It's uh, it's fun. It's but it's a hard, long road. I mean, uh, you know, do I feel like Logan should have been in the NHL uh, full time before now? Uh, yeah, obviously, it's frustrating, you know. But it's not easy. It's not always easy. And even though when you feel like things are uh, not uh, just. Uh, you got to battle through it and push and keep your confidence and, and keep battling and showing that you belong. And that's, that's, it's, again, part of the, part of the battle is the confidence level is, you know, always being kind of beat down. You got to find a way to keep your confidence and keep going up. So, um, no, I'm excited. I mean, I love the sport. It's the sport of hockey has given me everything. So, you know, for me, there's nothing really, else that I would want them to do. So hopefully uh, they have the passion. Well, I shouldn't say that. They do have the passion to be hockey players, uh, um, you know, and hopefully they both achieve their dreams.
So uh, we could sit here and read NHL analysts tell us what the best part of Logan's game is, but I want to ask you as a father, uh, what is your favorite part of Logan's game uh, when he's playing for the Ottawa Senators? Well, I mean, it's his brain. It's the same thing that, you know, I had basically. He's uh, plays with his head up. He, he makes guys around him better. Um, he's on top. Fish and he and he's ass off. I mean, he's six foot six and a half. Uh, so I, w- I wouldn't want him to find if we we're, you know, putting together a track team, uh, especially a, tra- a printing team. Um, but uh, but he's a an intelligent, skilled hockey player that, uh, as a coach, uh, those are the guys that I love coaching. You know, uh, the guys that can make plays and certainly make the guys around them better. So uh, we talked about uh, you making the Stanley Cup Finals twice and obviously not getting to lift the cup, but I wanted to ask you, when the Blues won last season, uh, we asked Bernie Federko this, and he said that was the first time he ever touched the cup. Was that the same for you? Did you uh, get to touch the Stanley Cup and raise it over your head at all? Plenty of opportunity. I never did touch it. I uh, I don't know. It's just something that us hockey players, I guess, I, I tell my boys that the, the first time I touch it is when one of them win it. So um, that's kind of my, uh, I didn't want to, you know, I didn't, I didn't do anything last year other than cheer. Right. Yeah, um, right. Same yeah. as me. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't earn anything. Um, but I certainly enjoyed uh, being a part of the, you know, the festivities, the parade for sure. You know, I was straight of management to, um, allow the alumni to be a part of that. That was something uh, very, very memorable. Yes, I, I agree. Now, uh, now Jeff, I, I really want to appreciate you for coming on uh, today's show. And um, I've told this story before, but I'm going to, and I know I've even told you before, but this was years ago. I actually attribute, and I mentioned myself personally, um, modeling my game after you. And a big part of that was because when I was a young kid, I was a huge Cardinals fan didn't care about hockey, which drove my dad nuts. And uh, we saw you, my mom took me to a venture and you were signing autographs. And I, um, I was like, nah, we don't need to meet him, mom. And she goes, no, 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 let's just, let's just go meet him. Go meet this guy. So we went up and met you. I was wearing all Cardinals gear and you were, you were asking if I was a blues fan. And I said, no, you actually got me tickets to the next game that the next night, my dad took me, uh, Brett Hall scored a hat trick. You guys beat the Canadians, and I was hooked for life. So I actually attribute my hockey love a lot to what you did. So uh, just wanted to tell you in person and, and say thank you again because without hockey, I don't know where I'd be in my life. <laughs> what, a, what a great story. That's awesome. Um, yeah. That's, that's so cool. But, uh, no, there really isn't any sport like hockey. And uh, like I said, it's given me everything and, and – the fans of St. Louis were, the, you know, the people of St. Louis were the reason we ended up coming back here. And, you know, we're we're happy to be here and we'll be here for forever. Yep. That is Jeff Brown, uh, former St. Louis Blue and, uh, as, again, coach for the Bandits, the River Otters, the Indiana Ice, Ottawa 67's father of Logan and Caden. Hopefully Caden will be in the NHL here very soon, maybe even playing for the Blues. Uh, Jeff, thank you very much for joining the show. And uh, again, we'll uh, we'll have to keep an eye on the boys because it seems like uh, they're destined for some greatness in the NHL. Thanks very much for having me. That was fun. What are you doing? Why are you watching me right now? I, don't you know you can be podcasting Let's Go Blues Radio right now and check out a... a interview about somebody who's a prospect in the organization what are you doing why are you watching me get out of here go go